After setting up the Raspberry Pi 4 as a desktop Linux computer, I wanted to try out the official Raspberry Pi 7-inch touchscreen display. I configured it to run the Magic Mirror 2 software to use it as a dashboard to display different widgets with news headlines, a calendar, time of day, but of course you can expand it to display pretty much anything you want. Alright, let's do this. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They're currently offering 10 pieces of one or two layer PCBs for $5 with a build time of 24 hours. They have any option you need for your PCBs and the resulting quality of the boards is great. With friendly staff and great facilities, I highly recommend PCBWay for your PCB manufacturing needs. For this video, I use the Raspberry Pi 4 single board computer. I also use a micro SD card that we had set up in another video to run the Raspbian operating system. I also used the official Raspberry Pi 7 inch HDMI touchscreen display, which brings a controller board, a flex ribbon cable, a couple of female to female jumper wires, and some mounting hardware for which I'll use a Phillips head screwdriver. I'll also use my Raspberry Pi label for identifying the different pins on the Raspberry Pi. I'll also use a USB keyboard with its USB adapter, a micro HDMI cable connected to my HDMI monitor, and a 5 volt power supply. You can find all these parts in my little Amazon shop or you can go through the links in the description of the video. Mounting the Raspberry Pi 4 to the back of the touchscreen display is pretty straightforward. With everything assembled, I'll go ahead and use my Raspberry Pi label to identify the power pins that I'll need for the controller board. With the micro SD card flash with Raspbian as we did in another video, I'll go ahead and put it in. You're probably better off putting it in at an earlier stage of the assembly process. I'll connect the USB adapter for the keyboard, the HDMI cable for the monitor, the USB-C power supply and hit the little switch on the power supply to turn everything on. We see that the screen is immediately recognized, but given the orientation that I have it for this video, I'll need to go through the preference menu, select screen configuration, and for the touchscreen display option, select an orientation of inverted. I can see that the screen flips 180 degrees, so I'm ready to try things out. Every time we install new hardware, it's a good idea to run an aptitude update and an aptitude upgrade to make sure that all the packages are in their latest versions. Installing the Magic Mirror 2 software to create a dashboard display is pretty straightforward. We can go to its GitHub page, the link is in the description of the video, and copy the automated installation command onto a terminal window. After a few minutes, when the installation finishes, we can copy paste the command as suggested by the installation process. And we see that the dashboard screen comes up on our main monitor. In order for this dashboard to be shown on the touchscreen display, we need to configure a few things. With any text editor that you want to use, we'll open the config.js file that is inside the config folder. Among other things, we can see all the different widgets that we can display on our little dashboard. 
given the size of our screen 7 inches with a resolution of 800 by 400 pixels, we'll need to pick and choose just a few of them. But first, let's use the Electron Options parameter to move the dashboard from the monitor onto the touchscreen. If I run the npm start command again, I can see that the dashboard comes up on the actual touchscreen. As I mentioned, we can see that the different widgets overlap each other due to the small size of the screen. I'll press Ctrl Q or Ctrl C to stop this instance and go back to the configuration to first move to the upper right the calendar and secondly to get rid of the complement widget. If I run it again, I can see that everything is displayed quite nicely. I invite you to play with the different modules, the different regions, and configure the dashboard to show whatever you want. The last thing I'll do is configure it so that it runs right after the system boots up. For this, I'll use the PM2 program. I'll stop and delete the instance that was created during the installation process. Then if I use the startup option, I can copy paste the command that I need to run. Once PM2 is enabled during startup, I'll use the start option with the shell script that is already written in the Magic Mirror software. I'll use the save option to save the changes. And if I reboot the system, I can test things out. And voila! After a few seconds, the PM2 program runs in the background, starts the Magic Mirror software, which has been configured to run on the 7-inch official Raspberry Pi touchscreen display that's attached to my Raspberry Pi 4. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos and I will see you next time.